Lesson 14, Participles. English Participles. English Participles, like Greek Participles, are verbs that are used as adjectives. And we'll look at the differences as we go. The present participle in English usually ends with an ing. So we get rising sun, thinning hair, spending money. The past participle usually ends with a D, T, or N. So the past of the present participle, rising sun, thinning hair, and spending money, is risen sun, thinned hair, spent money. Greek participles are also verbal adjectives, but they're made up of two parts. The verb stem, and the verb stem contains aspect. As we talked about before, the verb stem itself contains the aspect which paints the picture of how the verb actually functions. So, the aspect for the present is continuous. For the aorist is undefined. The author is not telling us anything. And the perfect has perfect aspect. That is, it was completed in the past and the effects are continuing into the present. The second part are adjectival endings. At the ending, we're going to have adjectival endings. And this makes sense because we have case, number, and gender in Greek, and those all adjectives, whether they're participles or regular as, must be able to express case, number, and gender, so we know what noun or pronoun they are associated with. So, they agree with the noun they modify, or pronoun, in case, number, and gender. Active participles have a 3-1-3 declension, right? That means third declension for masculine, first declension for feminine, third declension for neuter. Middle or middle passive endings are 2-1-2 two, two declensions, that is second declension for the masculine, first declension for the feminine, and second declension for the neuter. And aorist passive, like the active, take 3-1-3 three, three declension endings. Present active participle. The stem is present, and because it's present, it contains the continuous aspect. The voice is active, and the endings are the present active participle of a me plus three one three adjectival endings. The verb that we're going to add it to is a me plus three, one, three adjectival endings. And these two things together will make up the ending that you're going to put onto the stem. And the translation, which we'll get to much later, is while loosing for the uh, present active participle of luo. Formation of the present active participle begins with a verb stem, and remember that verb stem contains the aspect. And we're going to use lu, and we know we're using lu because lu never changes no matter what stem it is. And we're going to add to this a 313 present active participle of a me. And we'll look at these later. I'm going to give you the chart for what the present active participle of a me is. So we end up with lu own. Loosing the present active participle a me, the root of which is aunt, and a me by itself means I am, you remember? And therefore, its participle would be being. So, this is the participle of being. Remember, the participle is an adjective, so we're going to decline it just like we normally decline an adjective. But a present active adjective 
is always in a 3-1-3 declension. So let's look at it. The nominative singular, own. And look at, we have a smooth breathing and an accent. This looks like the, the ending itself. But this accent here and smooth breathing, tell it it's actually a word. Remember, only the very first letter, vowel, of a, of a word can have a smooth breathing. So if you see smooth breathing, it's a word. And the neuter, remember, is always the same in the nominative and the accusative. And the neuter is on, both in the nominative and the accusative. The genitive is the same in the masculine and neuter in all. Therefore, it is on toss and that toss ending. We remember from the third declension and neuter is on toss as well. The dative is the same. The masculine and neuter are always the same in the masculine and neuter. Therefore, the dative on T, that yoda at the end, which is the true sign of a dative, but there's no yoda subscript because a yoda subscripts only under a long vowel, and that's a tau in front of it. It can't subscript under a tau. The accusative is on ta. The nominative plural masculine is antes, epsilon sigma ending. We're familiar with that. The neuter, just like all neuters, is the same in the nominative and the accusative. So we have on ta, and the neuter plural is always alpha in the nominative and accusative. So we have anta and anta. Genitive plural, just like the singular, is always the same in the genitive, in the, I'm sorry, in the masculine and neuter. So we have antone, antone. Dative plural is the same thing. It's the same in the masculine and neuter. Usi and usi. Now that sigma there, if we look back at that third declension, this sigma, when added to that new tau, gives us a sigma. So we're back once again to a sigma. The difficult thing about this, looking at it, is that this is the ending for the present indicative third person singular. The accusative is on toss. And then the feminine is a first declension. So we're just going to go through it, but it's going to have a standard endings of the first declension. The first thing to notice is it comes from a different stem. Okay? The feminine is us. Us is its stem as opposed to ont for the masculine and neuter. So it's going to take us all the way down, and this is an alpha. So we have usa, and we have useis, that sigma is the genitive ending, and because that alpha comes after a consonant, the genitive and dative will have etas in them. So we'll get use, and now we have the yoda subscript under the eta, because the yoda subscripts under a long vowel. The accusative is usan, that nu runs across. Then the nominative plural is usai, uson, and this is our gift, remember, that in the genitive plural, the ending is always omega nu, own. However, here's where you can see the difference in the stems. The genitive plural for the masculine is ont, own. And that's the same as the neuter, ont, own. But in the feminine, because the stem is usa, it is us, own. Usais is the dative, and usas is the feminine accusative. The present active P 
participle of luo. We're moving up one more step where we looked at the ani, which was being. We're now looking at the participle of luo, which is now adding an ing from the being. You can think of it that way. The being, which is the ending, the ing is being added to the present and we're getting loosing. So the masculine is lu own. That omega nu is going to be unique to the masculine singular nominative. It kind of looks like a genitive plural that kind of gets you off, but the giveaway is it there's going to be a tau or something before that omega. It's not going to be just the stem with the omega nu. It's going to be the stem with something and then the omega nu. The feminine is going to be looked at after we're finished. So we're going to look at the neuter, which has the same peculiar identity, which is the nominative and the accusative are always the same, both in the singular and in the plural, on, luon, so these are all mean just being, right? But like an adjective, which it is, it would depend on what noun it was modifying. So luantas is the same in the genitive in the masculine and neuter. So loosing or of loosing, for loosing. But the important thing is this adjective doesn't really have any meaning like for, of. This adjective is linked to a noun which has meaning, and it just goes along with whatever the noun has as meaning. The dative is luanti, both for the masculine and the neuter, as we would expect. Luanta, the masculine. Nominative, plural. Luantes, that epsilon sigma. And the neuter is the same in the nominative and accusative, luanta, an accusative luanta, ending in the, in the neuter, plural is always alpha. Then we have luantone, same in the masculine and neuter. The dative is luusi, again, the same in the masculine and neuter. And the accusative plural is luantas. And then we're going to run through the feminine, luusa, and that usa is going to kill you. But that usa is a feminine ending. That sigma alpha is going to look like it is a first aorist ending. I know, and it's going to kill you. Think of this usa as one thing. Luuses, luuse, and luusan. The endings are first declension, a, ace, a, on. And the nominative plural, luusai. Luuson, and that omega nu is going to run straight across, masculine, feminine, neuter. Luusais, and then the accusative plural, luusas. The present middle passive participle. The purpose for the present middle passive participle, this is in the present, so there are going to be two major uses. One, it is used as a passive, and two, it's used as a deponent. There are very rare uses of it after Otherwise, we want to remember those two things. It's a deponent, if it's a deponent in your vocabulary. Otherwise, it's probably passive. So, the middle passive participle, the stem, is present. And because the stem is present, of course, the aspect is continuous. The voice is middle passive. This is the present. And the endings are the term amen, okay, 
that you remember, amen, like amen, amen, plus the 212 adjectival ending. In the active, we had no ending plus 313 adjectival. In the middle, we have amen plus 212. Trust me, you're going to get so used to seeing amen that when you see it, you're just going to know partisan. And the translation, what we will get to, is while being loosed. So, the formation of the present active middle participle. We have the verb stem, of course, lu. And then we're going to add what I call the middle term. And this is just one you're going to remember. It kind of looks like, it looks identical, actually, to a first-person singular present ending, amen. The big giveaway, however, is it will never end the word. It's always going to be followed by an adjectival ending. And in this case, it is always followed by a 212 adjectival ending. Okay, these are the same endings that you used with logos, logos, lago, lago, logon. So, we're going to end up with luamenas, being loosed. And this is the masculine nominative singular. Look, all we care about is the ending here. And that, like logos, is the masculine nominative singular. And this men, amen, just tells us it is passive. The present middle passive participle of luo. We have luamenas, that omenacron sigma. What I want you to do is just keep looking at the endings. So, neuter, luamenan, the same in the nominative and the accusative, luamenan. Genitive is going to be the same, luamenu, lagas, lagu. Dative, Yoda subscript, luameno, sagas, lagu, lago. And then the ending is going to have a new all the way across, luamenan. So we would have had lagas, lagu, lago, lago. Luamenoi. And then the neuter is the same in the nominative and accusative, alpha always the ending. Luamina, luamina. Genitive is the same, actually all the way across. Luamenon, luamenon. Dative, luamenois, same in the masculine and neuter. And the cuter, accusative is luamenus. Feminine, it's going to take eta endings in the singular. Luamene, luamenes. Luamene, Yoda subscript. Luamenein, nu all the way across for the accusative. The nominative is luamenai as opposed to luamenoi for the masculine. And then its genitive plural is all genitive plurals are own. So in the present middle passive, there is no way of telling, just like adjectives, because it is an adjective, whether or not it is masculine, feminine, or neuter. So when you were parsing it, you would say M slash F slash N. Then we have Luamenais and Luamenas. This is exactly the same structure as all adjectives. Agathe, Agathes, okay? Lagas, lago, lago, lago. So, one way to memorize this, the easiest way to memorize this, is don't memorize all these endings. Remember, the endings are actually the present active participle of a me. So, what you want to do is learn these as adjectives rather than going through and thinking, I have to go through these tables. So, the present active is a 313, on, usa, on. Okay, that, those are the words that you're going to learn. On, usa, on. 
And like a third declension, own, we would expect on toss, the same for the neuter. And usa is a first declension, so we're going to get usa uses. So learn these as separate words. And the present middle, all you have to do, again, is learning as an adjective. Amanas, amane, amanan. And you can do it any way you want. Amanas, amane, amanan. Those are the endings to the middle. And of course, the genitive is amanu, amanes, amanu, because this is a two, one, two declension. Okay, let's do a few exercises. This is the present active participle examples. And the sentence we have here is autas eothen didaskon ton lagon. So when we're dealing with participles, what we want to do is first identify a participle in the sentence. So we ask, what is the participle? And the participle is didaskon. And we look at it and realize it has the first part of a verb, didasco, and the second part is a participle ending, on. So the participle is didaskon, and the next question that we have is, what is its case, number, and gender? So all we look at is the very end of it, this own, and this is a participle, so, we look at it and realize this is nominative, singular, masculine. I know some of you said, oh, genitive, plural, and it certainly looks genitive, plural. But own is the nominative, singular, masculine ending for a present participle, something you just have to learn. So, once we know it's a participle, remember a participle is an adjective, so it has to modify something. So what noun or pronoun is it modifying? And we see it's modifying autos. So whatever is happening here is a modification of autos. The translation, he came teaching the word. He autos, is related to didaskon. He is teaching the word. Aute eothen didaskusa ton lagan. Well, when we ask for the participle, we have a long one here, we have didaskusa, and that usa ending just jumps right out at us. So when we ask case number and gender now, Nominative, singular, but feminine. Usa, being. So, what noun or pronoun is it modifying? Well, the only word that is nominative, singular, feminine, is aute. And since that's in the nominative, it's the subject of the sentence, and we get the translation, she came teaching the word. Now, this is important. Why is didaskusa not related to logon? How do we know that? We know it because, oh, I love Greek, because the case, number, and gender must agree. This is a feminine adjective. It cannot attach itself to a masculine noun, which logon is. A participle, however, can take an object. So, she came teaching the word. She, didn't, she did not come the word. She came teaching the word. So that part, remember, the participle is made up of two parts. It is a verb and an adjectival ending. It still has qualities of verb, that is, it can take an object and several other things, and it has the qualities of an adjective. It must link to a noun. Hayesus eden autain didaskusan. Now, this is kind of different. So, let's look for the participle. 
And what we have is the Daskusan. But when we look at this participle, we realize this is not a nominative participle. Not with that new at the end. So, we're going to ask the next question. What is its case number and gender? What is the case number and gender of Usan? Well, Usa is the basis of it. And it has a new added to it. So that makes it accusative, singular, and feminine. So when we ask the next question, what noun or pronoun is it modifying? Well, it cannot be modifying Jesus. Well, for two reasons. Jesus is nominative and masculine. So we have to look at the word that it could be modifying. And that word is outtain. The translation, Jesus saw her teaching. Jesus saw her teaching. She is teaching. Now, in English, this is a dangling participle. Because in English, Jesus saw her teaching. We don't know whether it means Jesus saw her while he was teaching, or Jesus saw her teaching. So it's called a dangling participle, and it gets crossed out by your professors. Bad grammar. In Greek, however, it's not a dangling participle because we have case agreement. There's no question what this word is modifying. There's only one word in the entire sentence it can modify. And that is a feminine accusative, and that is her. So, this is the beauty we have of Greek with this case. We no longer fear that we don't understand that things are jutting out there in nowhere. They will be attached to other words. So, let's look at the uh, examples for the present middle passive participle. Autas elten did askaminas tan lagan. In this case, we would identify the participle did askaminas. And at the end of it, we see that men, that amen, before the second ending. And we know that, just like the ending of lagas, this is masculine singular. So, if this is identified with something, it must relate to a masculine, singular, nominative noun or pronoun. And we have one here, autos, he. The discaminas here is middle passive, that amen tells us that. And in the present, it's usually going to be passive. The, word, the verb that it comes from is didasco, to teach, so our translation is going to be he went being taught the word. Chemes eltomen noi tan lagan. Now this is interesting because we look at the participle and we see that it is plural and that it is masculine nominative. So we go out looking for a plural masculine nominative noun or pronoun. We found out there isn't one. I mean, all we find is hemes, we. Well, we is plural, right? And it is nominative. So it must be the way, the re reference that we have for the participle. It must be masculine. So in this case, we are masculine. In Greek, any group that you have that consists of men and women, the masculine term is used. So if it's plural, it will always be masculine unless it is all women. So we get, we went, and since this is passive, being taught 
the word. Now I'm using the being because the present is continuous, right? The aspect of the present is continuous. So I want to bring that out. So I'm going to say we went being taught the word. Hayesus Aden Atan Echamenan. The participle that we have, and this is a deponent from Erchoma, is Erchamenan. That ending is an accusative ending, so we're looking for an accusative word. And we found one with Atan, masculine accusative. It cannot refer to Hayesus, because Jesus, although it's masculine, is in the nominative. So it must read, Jesus saw him coming. Once again, in English we would have a dangling participle, but in Greek we have no problem understanding who's coming and who's seeing. Hayesis blepe autain echamenein. This is basically the same sentence. It's in the present. Jesus is watching her ein autain coming. And we know that from the ending. So look at the difference from the one before. We had autan echamenon. Him coming. We now have autain erchamenein. This is an adjective. Okay. This is taking on the traits of that pronoun. Since it's, the pronoun is autain, that is, it is singular, feminine, accusative. The adjective and the adjective participle must be in the same case number and gender. Adverbial versus adjectival participle. Now, you have two different chapters on this, and Maus explains very clearly the difference between them. But the important thing to understand is there is only one participial form. There is not an adverbial participle form or an adjectival participle form. There's only one participle. And the designation of an adverbial or an adjectival depends upon how it is being used in the sentence. That's all it is. It's the same word. It's just that sometimes in the sentence it will be used as an adjective and then sometimes it will be used as an adverb. Like in Greek, almost any adjective can also be used as an adverb if it is in that relationship. So, an adverbial participle, if we think of it being adverbial, it means we think of it relating more closely to the verb. And it's answering the questions when, where, or how. And these are the questions that an adverb answers, like when did you do it? Where did you do it? How did you do it? These are adverbial questions. Adjectival participles relate more closely to the noun, and they are answering the questions of who or what. Okay? Because the noun is what or who, they are answering those questions. The most important participle is the participle of time. Relative time. This is, a, this is a concept that's sometimes a little bit difficult to understand. Participles are adjectives with verbal components. And as we know from English, one of the verbal components is that of time. But in a participle, that verbal component has only aspect, but does not have time. So, the present participle 
this is when this comes a little bit difficult, is a present participle because the stem is a present stem. A present stem participle is not being used because it's happening right now. It's being used because of the continuous aspect of the stem. So what we care about is the aspect, but not the time variation. The time of the participle is dependent upon the main verb. So, if the main verb is in the past, then the participle is in some relationship to the past, future, etc. So, the main thing to understand is it is the main verb because a verb can have two elements, right? Both time and aspect. So, it contains the time. The only thing that a participle can have is aspect. Therefore, it's going to have what is called relative time. Time relative to the main verb. So, an aspect determines the translation. For a present continuous, if the verb were poieo, doing, it would be while doing or when doing. It is continuous with the same time that the verb is going on. So, if the verb is present, it is continuous with the present, and it is while doing. If it is in the aorist, it means it is not continuous. So, if the main part is in the present, and the participle is in the aorist, its relative is after. So, after doing would be what the participle would be. And the perfect would be having done so and so and so and so and so and so. Jesus went. Adverbial participles. An adverb is a word that modifies a verb, its main function, an adjective, or another adge adverb. An adverb may be a single word, or, and this is going to be very important to us, it may be an adverbial phrase. And the questions that it often asks are how, in this case, he did it quickly, single word. And an adverbial phrase, he did it however he could. When, she came early, and the phrase, she came whenever she could. And if you see the entire phrase, whenever she could, answers the question, when. Where, they went away, and the adverbial phrase, they went wherever they could. Greek participles contain components of both verbal stem and adjectival endings, and they are often translated adverbially. And this is going to be something that we need to look at and understand. The present participle, the one that we're weird about right now, is going to be translated with when or while, if it is used as an adverb. Remember the time in the present is continuous with the time of the main verb. The relative time of a present is continuous with the time of the main verb. So, while running, I saw the man. While. And the single word is now becomes uh, an adverbial phrase. If we wanted to extend this, we could say, while I was running, I saw the man. But while running, I saw the man is very clear. Let's look at some examples of the present uh, adverbial participle. The two possibilities are going to be active and middle passive. These are the two voices that exist for the present tense. So, these are the two type of participles that we're going to be seeing in the present. 
luon blepe auta. Luon is from the verb luo, to loosen, but that own at the beginning tells us that this is masculine nominative singular. And because at the beginning of the sentence there's a good chance that this is going to be looked at as an adverb. So we're going to have the time at the same time as the main verb, which is blepe, while loosing, he sees it. Now, this is really important. Lu on, we know, is masculine singular. So, even though there's nothing in the sentence to tell us what the gender of the, of the actor is, Lepe doesn't have gender, the participle ending does. And it tells us this is masculine singular. So we're going to translate as, while loosing, he sees it. This usa, however, tells us feminine, always. So we get, lu usa blepe ata, and we get, while loosing, she sees it. Now, this is an adverbial phrase, right? While doing something, while loosing. The idea here is it happens at the same time, and we're going to use the ing not only because uh, uh, English uses the ing for present, we're using it for continuous, while loosing a continuous action. Luon eblepsenata. So, even though eblepsen occurs in the past, luon is still continuous. While loosing, he saw it. Or we could say, while he was loosing, he saw it. Lugusa eblepsenata, feminine. While loosing, she saw it. The middle passive, that amen, amen, before the ending, tells us middle passes. All we got to see. So we see luaminas blepeata. So this is middle passive. And that Omicron Sigma tells us this is masculine. So we know that this is masculine that is passive. So while being loose, and I'm using this ing with the b in order to emphasize the continuous, while being loosed he sees it. The main verb has the subject within it. Luamene blepeata. This time feminine ending. While being loosed, she sees it. Luaminas eblepsenata. In this case, we have a past tense, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. What matters is this is continuous. It happens at the same time as the verb. While being loosed, he saw it. And luamene eblepsenata, again, continuous, happens at the same time as the verb, this time feminine, while being loosed, she saw it. The adjectival use of the participle. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time and you wonder why. The reason is they act just like adjectives. They follow identical rules of adjectives because they are adjectives. So everything you learned about adjectives is also true of the participle when it is adjectival. So I'm just going to go through the same rules that you were given with uh, adjectives earlier. There are three types. We have substantive. And that means that the word is taking the place of a noun. And participles do this all the time. This is a very, very good use of a participle to have a definite article and then a participle to become a noun. So, luon if we translate it as destroying, haluon is the destroying one or man. This is the same way that 
any adjective would work. We would translate it because we do not have a noun for it to modify, it becomes substantive. It becomes the noun. Haluon, the destroying man. The second one is attributive. This is attributive form that we remember with adjectives, and they're functioning as true adjectives, the way that we think of adjectives functioning in, Egypt, in English. So, haluon anthropos, haluon anthropos, it means the same thing as a substantive, except it's an attributive position, which is, it has an article in front of it, so it's between the article and the noun, the destroying man. There's two attributive positions. This is the most common, which is article noun, article adjective. Remember, this is a participle, but the participle is an adjective. So haanthropos haluon is the destroying man, or literally the man, the destroying one. So this is the attributive position. The predicative position is the one in which there is no article in front. In the other two, the substantive has an article in front, but there's no noun to modify. The attributive has an article in front of the adjective, whether, whether it's in the first position or the second position. So the predicative is haanthropos luon becomes the man is destroying or simply the man destroying. So let's look at the vocabulary for chapter 27. Anabino. 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 I go up or come up. Bino is to walk or go. Ana means up. Akierus. 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 Masculine, chief priest or high priest. And we can see that is archi, which is uh, high, chief, top. Uh, Hirius, which is uh, a priest. Dexias, Dexia, Dexion, Dexias, Dexias, Dexias. And that is right. Duo, Duo, Duo. Dua means two, and it cannot be declined, so it'll always be dual. Hetaras, look at the rough breathing in front of it. Hetaras, 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 hetara, hetaran, two, one, two. Other, another, different. Uankalizo, uankalizo. Euangelizo. Euangelizo means I bring good news or preach. Literally, I am good newsing. Tereo. Teoreo. Teoreo. I look at, behold, theater comes from this. Yerusaluma. 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 And this is Jerusalem. Katemai. 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 Katemai is to sit down or to live, to dwell. Katabino. Katabino. Catabino, where anabino means I go up, catabino obviously I go down. Ooh, 
who, who, where, parakaleo, parakaleo, parakaleo. Excellent contract. I call, urge, exhort, comfort. This is the word paraclete comes from. Pato. 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 I persuade. Trace, tria. Trace, tria. Three.